Hey everyone, welcome to another tech review. Today I'm going to review the Lenovo Mix 520 tablet. This is the upgraded model from Mix 510, which I have also reviewed on my YouTube channel about one and a half years ago. Now, before I say anything else, first of all, special thanks to Lenovo Singapore for providing me with this review unit, as well as the Active Pen 2, so that I can test this out for you guys. Now, my review will be from the perspective of a visual content creator, somebody who writes a lot, who edits photos, videos, who do graphic design on a daily basis. So I'm going to talk about all of those workflow as well as how good this new pen is at creating digital drawings with this tablet. This video review is going to be long. If you want to save some time, you can just check out the text review, which I have already published on my blog. The link will be in the video description below. The content in the text review and this video review will be the same. Okay, let's talk about the design first. The build quality is very solid. This is a 12.2 inch screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. So it's full HD. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10, so it's a bit taller compared to 16 by 9 aspect ratio screens. I personally like this aspect ratio. I don't like those uh, screens that are a bit too narrow. So on the back, we have the stand. And here, can you see here? This is the recess area so they can pull up the stand very easily. And this is the Lenovo hinge. It's quite tight, but if you are writing or drawing on it, as you press down on the screen, the stand is going to go all the way down like this. Now this is sold around US $900 to $1,000, depending on where you are buying it from. And for that price, Lenovo includes the keyboard as well as the Active Pen 2. So in terms of value, this definitely has more value compared to the Microsoft Surface Pro, which doesn't include the keypad, which doesn't include the Surface Pen. And um, right now, um, you can see that the screen is blank. And this is one of the downsides of this um, design. So earlier on, as I close the keyboard, it would put the computer to sleep. But as I open up the keyboard, the computer it doesn't wake up. So I have to press the power button here on the right side to wake it up. Typing experience is fantastic. The keys, they have very good travel, but the keyboard is a bit thin. So as you are typing, it does wobble slightly. Not a big issue. It's perfectly usable. In fact, this keyboard is quite comfortable to type with. The only downside to this keyboard is, just now I mentioned that closing part, and this small trackpad is usable, but it's a bit too small. I prefer using a mouse, so this is not a big deal to, for me. Now this keyboard has backlight, so to turn on the backlight, you just have to press function and spacebar, and it will turn on. But there is only one brightness. It's either on or it's off. This keyboard has two control buttons, one on the left and one on the right. I have to say this because there is only one control button on the Microsoft Surface Type Cover. There is no right control button. This button here, this is crucial to my workflow because whenever I'm using the pen, whenever I'm using the mouse, I need to access keyboard shortcuts on this side of the keyboard. And for example, if I'm doing some work right now, I need to use some keyboard shortcuts. I want to move this blue box below the red box. I can use the keyboard shortcuts by pressing the control button and push this box down. But with the Microsoft, type cover, I'm not able to do that because the control button is missing. And my hands, well, they are not that big enough for me to stretch, um, to click one, two, and three buttons like this. So I have a lot of uh, shortcuts I need to use here. Control plus, control minus to zoom in, zoom out. Control L to create a new layer. Control O to open, control P to print. There is Let's just say that this button, this control button on the right side, this is extremely crucial to me. Let's look at the ports that are available on the Mix 20. So you can actually just pull off the keyboard very easily. It connects to the tablet. This is a USB-C first generation, and this is USB 3, the usual type A port, full size. This is the power charging port. 
this little holes here they are for the air intake this is the hinge these are the speakers and this is the recess for the stand on the right side we have the power button the volume buttons this is the 3.5 mm audio jack i'm not sure what this is and speakers here as well the metal back has a smooth surface and here this is the micro sd card slot so if you want to expand your storage you can get those tiny micro sd card slots at really affordable prices the storage inside this particular unit is 256 gigs you have the option to configure this up to one terabyte ssd the biggest upgrade in the mix 520 is the use of quad core processors lenovo has used the intel i5-8250u which is a quad core 1.6 gigahertz processor the turbo speed is up to 3.4 but in this form factor you are not going to see speeds anywhere near 3.4 and even when i'm not doing anything right now I can hear the fans turning it's quite soft but it's always there it's always on even when i start up the computer um, the fans turn on straight away in terms of processing power this is significantly more powerful compared to the mix 510 before it and significantly more powerful compared to the microsoft surface pro 2017 which is running a dual core processor i mean quad core versus dual core this is definitely much faster i have done some uh, testing so these are the timings that i recorded while i exported 100 raw files photo files using various systems that i have so the one that i want to highlight to you is this part here so it took 4 minutes 19 seconds to export 100 raw files this is with the lenovo mix with the surface pro it took 9 minutes 33 seconds so the mix is two times faster this is four minutes plus surface pro is nine minutes and when i compare the mix 520 with the surface book 2 quad core processor so now it's quad core versus quad core the surface book 2 with a quad core 1.9 gigahertz it exported the photos in 3 minutes and 49 seconds so this mix 520 this is quite fast this is not that slow compared to the most powerful service book 2 so in terms of value for money you are really getting a lot of processing power with this the only downside is the fan noise and this is the fan noise i'm talking about those are the only benchmarks i'm going to show you because i don't run benchmarks for a living and benchmarks they don't tell the whole story so now i have connected the keyboard because i want to open up photoshop to show you how responsive the tablet is when it comes to working with large files so let me just launch photoshop this is photoshop cc and this is running on windows 10 so the launch is quite fast let me open up a huge file i'm going to open up this 900 megabyte file and open take note of how much time it takes to open that particular file so the ssd storage on this system it's actually quite fast but sometimes uh, it takes a bit longer to open the files but significantly faster compared to traditional hard drives all right so this is the 900 megabyte file the zooming this is really fast and because this is a touch screen you can zoom pan rotate very easily whether or not these finger gestures are supported depends on the app that you use with photoshop cc you can use finger gestures but with the older versions of photoshop uh, finger gestures are not supported and now i'm going to adjust the colors in this scene on the fly and see whether or not the updates are updated instantly so i'm going to change the color i'm going to change the hue using the hue saturation adjustment levels pay attention to the colors as i turn the slider 
here. So the changes, they are updated almost instantly. By the way, this tablet, this is running on 8 gigs of RAM. There is no option to configure it up to 16 gigs, so you are just stuck with 8 gigs. And this sort of performance, this is actually quite good. Very responsive with Photoshop when it comes to working with large files. Okay, let me open up a blank document and let's do some drawing. This is the Lenovo Active Pen 2 that is included. Now this is better compared to the previous version. Better in the sense that it feels more sensitive drawing with this pen. This is using Wacom technology just as it is with the first pen, but this supports up to 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity. There are some slight design changes, for example, it no longer has the clip, so be careful when you put this pen on the table. Be careful not to let it roll onto the floor, it's going to be expensive to replace. There is a back button. With the earlier pen, there is no back button, so with the new pen, there are two buttons on the side and one back button. But the earlier pen, it only has two side buttons. The biggest improvement to me, other than pressure sensitivity, is the tip. The tip in the new pen has more texture, so it provides more friction when you are writing and drawing on the screen. So this offers more control compared to the previous generation, which is just a hard plastic tip. This is quite slippery at times, but this, this really is quite pleasant to work with. So even if you have no matte screen protector on the tablet, you can still get that paper-like feeling when using this just because that tip is more textured now. And this pen, this is powered by a 4A battery. And the battery life is supposed to last for months. You can adjust pressure sensitivity of the pen and also assign shortcuts to the side buttons using the Wacom Pen app included. With the Wacom driver, you can adjust the pressure sensitivity using the slider dial here. You can also choose to calibrate to remove parallax. But this is a pretty small screen, 12 by 2 inches, and the glass surface is very close to the screen, so parallax is not a problem here. So the for me, I don't need to calibrate it. If you're using extended monitors, other monitors, other screens, you can choose to configure displays here to uh, determine how the pen will function on both screens. And here is where you can assign functions to the side buttons. Uh, there are a few predefined functions to choose from, the usual mouse clicks. If you want to assign a specific keyboard shortcut, you can do so as well. There is the option here. And right up here, by default, the ability to configure the top button here is not available. You have to pair the pen to the tablet using Bluetooth in order to open up the settings. And after this is made available, you can choose to assign certain functions or commands to the single click or double click action. I mentioned something about Bluetooth. Bluetooth is only required if you need to configure the top button. This pen is always on. You don't need to pair the pen in order to use it with the tablet. It's just that if you want to configure this button, you need to pair it with Bluetooth. All right, uh, that was quite a long sidetrack to talk about the pen. Let's go back to Photoshop. Pressure sensitivity works really well. And the lines, they are very smooth. Let me show you some quick strokes. By the way, you can actually rest your palm on the screen and draw. There is palm rejection and it works quite well. So there shouldn't be any stray strokes while your palm is on the screen. And the strokes, they taper very gradually. This is something that I always test for. I need the strokes to taper gradually. So this is great. Let me show you the strokes when drawn very slowly. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line very slowly and see if there is any diagonal jitter. For many of the electronic styluses or digital styluses that I have tested, when drawing lines like this, they wobble, they jitter, so they have this wavy effect going on. But here with the Lenovo Mix 520 and uh, ActivePen 2, it looks like I can get 
a very straight line. There is none of the wobble or jitter. So this is really, really good performance. The initial activation force is very light, so you can just draw very lightly on the screen and it should give you a very thin line. And this is a very accurate stylus. The cursor is always directly beneath the tip. So there is no misalignment. Very accurate. The tip is very small and it protrudes out slightly. So as you are drawing, you can always see the line come out from beneath the tip. And that is great. You may notice that there is some pixelation not on this drawing because this is zoom up to 400% but on the user interface the pixel density of this screen is not as high compared to the Microsoft Surface Pro because the resolution is only 1920 by 1200 this is a pretty workable resolution I have no problems with this at all Sketchable works really well with the pen pressure sensitivity works this is very responsive and if you want some dots you can do so as well just dot onto the screen no issues with midibank paint pro as well very responsive pressure works great the lines come out just the way i want them to be i would say the experience is quite close to using those normal graphic tablets or those pen displays usually for such convertibles such two-in-one computers the drawing performance is always not quite there but here with the mix 520 i think it's really very good one of the main reasons why i think the drawing experience is so nice is because they are using wacom pen technology this is affinity photo Pressure works here quite nicely. This is Adobe Illustrator. Pressure works fine. One thing I really like is you don't have to install any graphic drivers. So the Wacom driver has already been installed. You don't have to do anything else and the pressure just works with all the apps that you use. This is Krita. Pressure works fine. This is Artrage, pressure works fine. Oops, there is a stray stroke. Now the thing with palm rejection is in order to get perfect palm rejection, you have to make sure that the pen is close to the screen so that the cursor appears. When the cursor appears, there's going to be perfect palm rejection. But problem comes when you put your palm down like this before the cursor shows up. So for example, my little finger here it touches the screen before the cursor shows up so I get a dot like this but if I were to make sure that the pen is closer to the screen before I rest my hand if I do this then no stray strokes I have to make sure that the pen is always touching the screen before my hand this palm rejection behavior is similar to all other stylus I have tested so always make sure the pen goes to the screen first if you want to take notes you can definitely do so the app that I'm using right now is Wacom Bamboo Paper and it's able to capture my handwriting quite accurately and when taking notes there is no lag at all you can use the pen like a normal mouse when working with other apps this is Adobe Lightroom a photo editing app so I'm using this to adjust the dials here. By the way, the color support on this screen, I measured using a Spider 5 Pro color calibrator. It measured 89% sRGB. So the color accuracy is quite good. Not as good compared to 100% sRGB, but 89% is definitely good enough for graphic design work. But if you need to compare colors, if you really need critical color accuracy, then you have to connect an external monitor to this. And the only way to do that is to get a USB Type-C to a graphics port cable because 
the only two ports that are available on this Mix 520 is the USB-C and the USB Type-A. The last thing I want to talk about is battery life. I've been using this for two and a half hours. When I turned on the computer, it was at 95%. So two and a half hours later, we are looking at 48%. So that's like it dropped about 45% plus minus during the two and a half hours. So the battery life of this tablet, the Mix 520, this is not that good compared to other devices, more specifically compared to the Surface Pro, which has much longer battery life. The battery life for this is around five to six hours, depending on the type of app you use. So if you are going to use this for editing photos, for exporting videos, then this is going to use up a lot more battery life. All right, to conclude, other than the fan noise and battery life, I like almost everything about the Mix 520. The performance is very good quad-core processors. This is two times more powerful than those dual-core tablets. Because it's two times more powerful, it saves you two times the amount of time that you're going to spend on processor-intensive tasks like exporting photos, exporting videos, now, um, screen is quite good as well. Resolution may not be as high compared to other brands, but this is still Full HD. This is a perfectly workable resolution for the type of work that I need to do, the type of work that I need to do on such a small screen. The Mix 520, in my opinion, really provides a lot of value for the money you spend. Performance is good, in fact, the performance is so good that I was quite surprised. But in exchange for that performance, you have the fan noise. And also for the price you pay, you get all the basic computing accessories included. I mean, what else can you ask for? I hope that in the future model, maybe they can upgrade the USB Type-C to the third generation so that you can connect external graphics card to it. Maybe Lenovo should include the ability to charge this tablet through the USB Type-C port. So overall, um, terrific value for money. And that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to find out where you can get the Mix 520, you can check out the product links in the video description below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.